Gospel of Luke chapter 18, the Gospel of Luke chapter 18, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 8, the Gospel of Luke chapter 18, and I will be reading verses 1 through 8. We are in a series this month, a um, series entitled Transform Through the Power of Prayer. Amen. And so we preached on uh, praying my way through first installment, first John 5, 13 through 15. And from that sermon we surmised and understood from the scripture that in order for us to get a prayer through, then we have to pray God's will. The only way to pray God's will is to pray God's word. Amen. Because it is just the confidence we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. So, one, we have to pray God's will. Amen. In order to receive what we need from the Lord. Yesterday, uh, last, excuse me, last Sunday, we preached on persistence. Persistent prayer overcomes obstacles. We talked about the persistent friend who went to uh, the house of the phone at midnight and knocked on the door. And the friend uh, did not uh, want to answer the door because it was midnight and their children were free. And the text says that if he doesn't answer because of friendship, he'll answer because of persistence. So God says, speak, and you will find not if the door be open ask, and it will be given unto you. In other words, it takes persistence to receive what you want from God. So don't just pray one time and then give up. You got to keep praying. But you got to pray His will continually to get what you want from the Lord. Amen. Today God has us today in Luke chapter 18. And we'll be reading verses 1 through 8, and it says there, Then Jesus told his disciples, you know, the natural version of parable, to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that he gets justice, so that he won't eventually come and attack me. The Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, the Son of Man comes, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? My brothers and sisters, I just want to preach just for a little while from the subject, Act Affirmatively. Act Affirmatively. Amen. Act Affirmatively. My brothers and sisters, sometimes Act is stranger than fiction. For a country that has an appalling, atrocious, and abhorrent past of racism, discrimination, and slavery, to strike down affirmative action for college admissions says that that country is serious about equality and justice. Just like Abel's blood cried from the ground. I believe that the first African American Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall's legacy of fighting for justice, equality, and affirmative action is making a similar cry. The cry for justice has never been silenced. 
and the danger must continue to be echoed because Douglas Marshall's replacement, who was nominated by George Herbert Bush, voted recently to strike down a permanent action for college admissions. A permanent action is defined as the allocation of resources for employment. It is also defined as the practice or the policy of favoring individuals belonging to groups regarded as disadvantaged or subject to discrimination. A sort of action at its inception was put in place to urge employers to treat employees fairly. For this one Afro wearing, car carrying member of the Black Panther Party, who himself benefited from affirmative action in college admissions to vote against his stance that he must be a puppet on the screen. I believe that without fear of retribution, that no one else in the African American community has benefited more from affirmative action than Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. From being recruited into Holy Cross, a college that was searching for African American students to increase their diversity, to be admitted into Yale Law because of their extensive affirmative action plan to admit more minority students, to be hired by the Attorney General's office because of his race, and even working in the White House to head the Equal Opportunity Commission, to finally be nominated to Supreme Court Justice says to us that no one else has benefited more from affirmative action than him. It is evidence that once Clarence Thomas was thrown a lifeline for equal opportunity and made it to the top, he cut the string. So no other minority would climb to the top with the same help or assistance that he had. It is true that we never forget the bridge that brought us over. But we should also be willing to build new bridges so those who come behind us will be able to cross over into areas and territory that we never thought possible. It is not always how far you come, but rather who you help. Because there is no success without success. And those uh, who are coming behind you will never know the way unless you show them. My uh, dear friends, for 10 years, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has been trying to remove affirmative action because of his own experience. After he graduated from Yale Law, he was unable to find work in the legal profession. However, instead of blaming his rejection on not being hired because of racist hiring practices and being overlooked because of the color of his skin, Rather, he blamed the idea that his degree was tainted because of the implication that he got where he got because of the because of affirmative action. He put, listen to me clearly, he put a 10 cent stamp on his law degree as if his degree was only worth 10 cents. And said, I quote, now I knew what a law degree from Yale was worth when it bore the tank of racial preference. I was humiliated and desperate, end quote. My brothers and sisters, if we're not careful, we can allow the enemy to convince us that we're not moving forward because of something that blessed us. I want to pause here and tell you that your marriage is a blessing. Your house is a blessing. Your career is a blessing. But we tend to blame the wrong people in circumstances when we're looking for something or someone to blame. However, your blessing can never curse you. Perhaps God just has you in a waiting phase because while you're trying to figure out God is already working it out. Perhaps God has you waiting while He's working. Maybe God is moving on your behalf while you're mourning, mourning, and complaining. God is working it out for you. 
and this way the text emphasizes the importance of persistence and faith through prayer. It was, in fact, the great German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer who believed that faith is a mystical reality manifesting in actions that reflected the transformative power of God's grace. Hebrew tells us that faith what is the substance of things what hope for, and it is the evidence of things what not seen. My dear friends, I want to tell you that if faith is substance, that means you can feel it. If your faith is evidence, that means you can work, you can feel it. And in other words, faith, in the clearly, is acting on what I believe as if it's already done. Oh my God, because the book of Psalms says that you have faith without a word of the word in faith. I want to really submit to you today that your actions are to be a reflection of what you've been praying for. Oh my God, let me tell you this again. You have to be sure your actions are to be a reflection of what you've been praying for. In other words, you are to act abundantly when you pray. Thank <laughs> you. 